everybody welcome back to the channel i just want to say that i am honored that a few of you have asked me what lens you should begin your stream photography journey with now typically when you search this question up you're going to get one or two different answers either the 35 millimeter lens or the 50 millimeter lens but if you shoot APS-C, it might look a little different because there's a crop factor of 1.5 to 1.6 times so roughly a 23 millimeter lens on an APS-C system like fujifilm would grant you a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent or 35 millimeters on APS-C would roughly grant you the 50. Now we'll be talking in full frame terms to the remainder of the video, just so that we're on the same page. I've used both of these focal lengths extensively over the past few years for all my street photography. And even though they are much more similar than they are different, there are some key differences that might steer you more towards one versus the other. This won't take 25 minutes to explain, so let's just get into it. 35 millimeter is easily my favorite focal range when it comes to street photography and it's because of the versatility. Since it's a little bit wider than a 50 millimeter lens, you are going to have the ability to capture more environmental context around your subject if you were to be standing in the same place with something like a 50. Whether somebody's on the same side of the street as you, you're walking towards them, or they're across the street, you wanna take a photo of something like a street corner, you're always going to have, in my experience, and just the way I shoot, enough space and enough in frame to capture the context that you need to tell your story. Also too, because of this versatility with it being a little bit wider, it does stretch out the frame a little bit. And if you're cognizant, if you allow a subject to occupy the foreground, mid-ground, and background, you can perform techniques such as layering, where if you have a subject in every single aspect of the frame, it makes for a more visually interesting photograph if you do it properly, and it keeps people looking at it longer. You could do this with a 50 hypothetically, but since it's a little bit longer, the focal plane is a bit compressed, so it's possible, but it's a bit more difficult. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, since it's a little bit wider, you can have a bit more liberty to shoot from the hip or hang the camera from your side because you are capturing a bit more in frame. I would never say that composition doesn't matter. Anybody who says that I think is a little bit misguided, but you are a bit more free to play around with it because you do have the luxury of cropping a little bit. So if you are going to shoot blind from the hip, hang it from the side of your leg, etc., if you can orient the camera or the photo properly after you do that, you can still salvage the photograph that you saw out of that with a good amount of cropping and having your hands set the right way. 35 millimeter lenses are typically, in my experience, more expensive than 50 millimeter lenses on any given lens system, but typically not always buy too, too much. So if money is an issue, again, depending on the system, 35s are typically a bit more expensive. But all in all, I think 35 millimeter lenses are more versatile in street photography just because they allow you to capture more of the street. And if you have a bit too much, you can always crop in a little bit, but just keep in mind that the more you crop, the more you kind of compromise the resolution, don't use it as a crutch. Now moving on to the 50 millimeter lens. This is my second favorite to use in street photography because it allows you, or me at least, to zero in a bit more on detail. Now. If you wanted to get a photograph of somebody dominating the frame, typically with a 35 millimeter lens, you got to get close and you don't always want to do that because sometimes, you know, your, your, your foot scuffs on the sidewalk the wrong way and now the moment could be disturbed. So 50 allows you to take a few steps back, but still be able to capture the subject and environmental context that you probably would have gotten with a 35 anyway. The biggest difference I would say though, from a compositional standpoint, is that 50 is not as forgiving. When it comes to shooting from the hip, shooting from the side of your leg, the line's gonna be a little bit sharper, the angle's more defined, you're not gonna have as much room to play around. So if you do shoot with composition in the forefront of your mind, you will be rewarded because when you have a more succinct frame with things oriented the proper way, you're gonna notice it and then the viewer is gonna notice it and it'll just feel a bit more complete. I think one of the coolest things you can do with a 50 that I guess you could do with any lens, but I think it works best with 50 just because of how it flattens out and compresses the scene is single out certain aspects of the environment that are really the thing that's catching your eye. 
for example, there's a great street photographer named Joshua Jackson. I'm sure you've seen his work. Everything dude does is incredible from his colors to his subjects, etc. But he often takes the smallest details out of a given scene. He might find a person interesting, but he really knows that it's their lips. Or he might be on a bus, for example, and he could photograph everybody in the bus, but he chooses one person. With the 50, since you don't have to get as close, and because it has a strong way of establishing a clear visual hierarchy, you have an easier time singling out some of these smaller individualized subjects that might not have been possible with wider lenses. Even though you're not going to be able to capture as much in the frame, what you can capture not only will seem clear to the viewer, but also if you do single it out and compose it properly, it can be that much stronger of a photograph. Typically 50 millimeter lenses in any given lens system are the cheapest, if you're doing a 1.8 for example, they're the cheapest lens next to the kit. So if money is an important aspect, 50 might be a great place to start because they typically don't break the bank. The main difference between the 35 millimeter view and 50 view is if you were standing in the same spot as somebody else, the 50 would look like you took maybe two or three steps closer and the 35 maybe two or st three steps back. Not much of a difference, but as you shoot, you'll see some of those aspects that I talked about come into play and others that are kind of intangible and only really noticeable once you're shooting more. Going out and doing it and practicing will show you more than any video I or someone else could make. So my advice to you is pick one, go take some photographs. Or if you've been using one of them for a while already, try something new and pick the other and see how they force you to step out of your comfort zone and photograph things a little bit differently. I could have gone all day for the list of differences and similarities, but then you wouldn't go out and shoot. So we're gonna cut this one short. I wanna thank you for watching. I hope this helped with some of the confusion you might've had with picking them for street photography and you go out and enjoy your time. I'll see you guys in the next one.